Recently, I was looking through some of my previous builds, and honestly, this one actually showed up, and I was like, yes, we really need to try and do that in the new Sprocket update. So, in the background, you can actually see the tank that I was building before. It is an open-top tank destroyer, and actually worked quite well. If you now look at your screen, you will see an AI render of a one-man tank. That is what we're going to go ahead and try and build today. Whether it's a good idea, a bad idea, whether it'll work, or whether it won't, it's going to be kind of interesting to see. So, let's go ahead and start building, and hopefully we can come up with something really nice. Alright, so let's go ahead and start off by going straight to the engine. I know this seems like a really strange place to start, but this engine has to be really, really small. So we're going to go with like a 4 litre engine. So we're going to go with 4 cylinders and 0.25 on each of these. I guess that's actually a 1 litre engine, isn't it? I feel like that makes sense. A 1 litre engine makes sense. So we're going to go with that. Hopefully it works out. Uh, from there, I would actually really like to make these guys even smaller, but I don't know if that's even a thing I can do. It doesn't look like it. At this point, I decided just to try and make the entire vehicle a little bit smaller, and obviously I needed to shove the uh, steering wheel on the tiny vehicles. So we're going to go ahead and make the body really small, and then we're going to go ahead and shove the steering wheel on there, and then we're going to go to the tracks and try and sort those out as well. So let's go ahead and get all that done, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so the Trex is an interesting one. I'm not going to lie, I find it really difficult to get used to the new Trex system, but uh, we should be able to do this relatively easily. So instead of syncing it to the actual chassis, what you can do is turn that button off and uh, do the length yourself, which is something that you do kind of need to do, especially if you're building something like this. We can then do the separation as well, so obviously we're going to have to bring these guys in, and I'm going to go ahead and try and shove it backwards as well. No idea how I'm going to go about doing that, but hopefully... Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that's something I can actually do. Um, yeah, no idea how this is going to work though. So I'm going to have to like send all of these guys backwards just like so. And I suppose that is somewhat correct. Okay, so this is how our tracks currently look. I actually don't mind the way they are currently looking. However, I would like an extra wheel on there if we're going to have it this way. So let's go to diameter of the wheels, make them a little bit smaller. If we then go to the length of them, we should be able to add another wheel. And I guess that's looking somewhat okay to me. I think so. Is there spacing on these? It looks like there is. So spacing on axle, that's not what we want. Spacing right here is what we want, but then we need the length to go down. There we go. Honestly, I think that's fine. So from there, what do I want to do? Well, I'm going to have to make all of this engine stuff fit, so let's go ahead and get to that next. Alright, so I'm not going to lie, it was actually kind of a challenge to get all of this to fit properly in here, but we eventually did it. So, because I know how big this engine now is, if I can make it one litre, that'd be great, but there's no way that would actually fit in here. So instead, let's go for a 0.25 again. Whoa! 0.25, there we go. And make it a little bit bigger in terms of just adding more cylinders. So 10 cylinders, there we go. 0.25 litres each. That seems pretty awesome. Okay, we do seem to be weighing way too much at the front, but I think that's fine. Okay, is it time for this? I don't know whether it is or whether it isn't, but let's go ahead and try. So this right here is, of course, <laughs> going to be our driver. There we go. Driver is right there. We now need this driver to actually fit. So you can do feet forwards, you can do feet backwards. I'm actually going to go ahead and try and do a straight-legged guy. There we go. We're going to go ahead and try and angle him just like this. And if I can sort of fit him in position, that would be awesome. Uh, the only thing that I would say is, this might be kind of challenging. Left arm down, let's do that. Right arm down as well. And can I angle him? Can I, like, sit him forwards? So he's somewhat touching the steering wheel. I think that somewhat works. Yes. We're then going to go back to compartments. And I am going to try and move this to sort of fit behind him. Otherwise, again, we might have some serious issues. But yeah. If I angle both of those up like that, we've got ourselves a driver <laughs> for our tank. All right, let's go ahead and make him actually drive. Sick. All right, it doesn't quite work, but it's close. All right, so we now need to actually work on the actual tracks themselves. Obviously, uh, the suspension is kind of important to us. So let's go ahead and try and figure it out. Length actually is the crossbars. We don't want to do that. Diameter, I am actually going to increase a little bit. And rest angle, we're going to have to do this with. No idea how I'm supposed to fit that in, though. Because that doesn't really work. We have some issues in there. 
I then pretty much spent the next, like, ages uh, trying to figure out how to actually get this into a situation where Gerald wouldn't tip over the entire tank. And honestly, I put a fuel tank in there, I tried adding a hell of a lot of armor to the back, and it just wouldn't work out. So in the end, I actually just added a bunch more wheels, and that's sort of how we dealt with it. It's not really a good way of dealing with it, and I'm not entirely sure what the problem was, but there you go. And now it is kind of working. The only thing is, I had to add a bunch of wheels to this to actually make it work, but he is actually able to drive around now, so I suppose that's a good thing. It also gives us some space for cannons on the front as well, so I guess this is okay? <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. Okay, so let's go ahead and spend the next little bit of time actually trying to figure this out even more. So let's go to edges, and we are going to split this right here. This will allow us to go from this point forwards. There we go. I'm going to drag this up into the air just a little bit. And then this is where the cannons are actually going to be positioned. So let's extrude it. Yes, bring it up like so. Yep. Angle that bit backwards just to where the steering wheel is pretty much. And then we're going to mount the cannons onto there. Two of the tiniest little mantlets in the world have been added to the front end. We've then got the traverse stuff right here as well, if we need it, uh, for the elevation and the azimuth. Yes. So, we've got our two cannons. All we need to do now is get ourselves some actual... Oh, sorry, two mantlets. We now need to get ourselves some actual cannons, <laughs> I guess? Uh, and the caliber of these is going to be absolutely tiny. Let's go with, like, 25 mil. There we go. And if we can, let's go ahead and try and shove those into these. Is that even going to work? Is that even how this works? I have no idea. Uh, but maybe. Right, okay. We've also actually got two of these, which isn't what we want. I'm going to have to turn this guy around. And I'm going to have to move this to the other side. And have it not flip over. If possible. There we go. So, that's on one side. We've got this on the other side. And that's how these are going to work. All right. I'm then going to need two of these, if possible. So if I can, like, shove that into there and have that actually work, I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Does that even... Is that even going to work? I have no idea. Okay, so if we look at the list of jobs that this guy has, he is a steering wheel operator. He's also a laying drive operator, another laying drive operator, an unnamed cannon operator, as well as an unnamed cannon breech loader. Um, and that again, and uh, he's also another breech loader and another cannon operator. So he should, in theory, be able to aim both guns up and down. I'm going to go ahead and add a... Uh, a sight in the center of there, because I feel like that makes some sense. And then we are going to have to add some ammunition to this, which is um, very interesting. Do these even work? Let's try and aim them both up. Alright, the one on the left is aiming up, the one on the right doesn't seem to be moving. But that's okay. What else is necessary on this vehicle? Well, ammunition, I suppose. So, <laughs> we're going to be storing a limited amount of ammunition right here on the front. It's literally a tiny, tiny amount. We're then going to shove a bunch of spare ammo, probably on the fenders. So let's go ahead and add some fenders to this. I don't actually know how you do them. You know what, let's just go ahead and add one of these. And we'll try and fit it in there so that it works. But yeah, essentially that's going to go on there like that. I'm going to have it push in a little bit. And I am going to uh, shrink it just a little bit too. So let's go ahead and do something along the lines of this. There we go. And let's shove some ammo onto there. This is so weird. Like, it's really, really weird. Shove all the ammo there, go ahead and make, like, less of it. And turn it around, so that it fits. Oh, yeah! We got ammo on our boost of a vehicle. Okay, shove this inwards. There we go. We obviously need to do that on both sides, so shove them both inwards. And that's it, we got all of our ammunition right there. Do both guns fire? Uh, oh, he has to think about it, which is interesting. Okay, fire. Oh, okay, right. So, the issue is, because his job is to do all of the guns, <laughs> um, he actually does everything one at a time. So I don't know if he's going to be able to drive as well as shoot. No, he literally changes slots in order to do that. 
So having a one-man tank is, I want to say, extremely pointless, especially if it's going to have two guns. So let's replace the two with just one, so he's got a few less jobs to do. Okay, so he's got one gun now. Let's go ahead and try and drive. Okay, excellent. Driving. It is still heavy on the front, but that's okay. Can we shoot the gun? Indeed, we can actually aim and shoot the gun, as well as reload it too. Sick. <laughs> this is so dumb. It is so, so stupid. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a bunch of decoration to this, and we'll see what we can make it look like in the end. I just wanted to show it really quickly in the actual bright uh, area. This is what it looks like uh, when it's driving around in the bright area. Uh, obviously, we do still have some balancing issues. <laughs> some really big balancing issues, but that's fine. I don't know how to even fix that. That's the issue. Alright, so this is what we ended up making. It is a little bit strange looking, to be totally honest with you guys, and I've got some balancing issues, which I'm not so sure how to actually fix, which is really, really annoying. Essentially, this thing, like, angles itself forwards, and angles itself down to the right. I don't think it should be doing that. I figured I'd actually show this after. So this is essentially how it drives. It angles itself down to the right. I feel like there's a bit of an issue there. Uh, there's nothing on the right-hand side at the front that is different to the left-hand side at the front. Uh, everything is symmetrical, so it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I still think it's kind of cool. Uh, I do wish that it would obviously drive around normally, but um, <laughs> it's not going to do that. Not anytime soon, anyway. I still think it's cool. Okay, right, I fixed the issue. I have actually fixed it probably as well, which is awesome. So, essentially, the reason that it was tipping over is because I built the tracks at the back of the workbench. So, essentially, the entire tank was built back here. I've now moved it all forwards, and what that's allowed it to do is balance itself out. Okay, I don't know what's just happened to all of that stuff, but it's all moved. Interesting. Uh, what? How has that just happened? Everything just teleported to the back. Obviously, there's going to be some issues because it's an alpha, uh, but that's fine. <laughs> so yes, as long as you build it in the right position, everything should be fine. I want to shoot the gun. Pew! Um, but yeah, kind of awesome. I just need to get rid of or get used to some of the issues that are going to be in this and uh, build with them, which is fine. So there you go. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.